Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend, and a happy Monday, y'all. We have an update on the Bill and Melinda Gates divorce. And did you guys watch the Escape SWV versus battle? Baby, we're talking about that and a lot more. You know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage. Let go. besties happy monday darling how are you child let me tell you the weekend i had left me without being in full voice for monday i went i called myself going down to the karaoke on friday so i went karaoke with some friends on friday and then saturday we had the versus battle you know escaping swv and i was singing along and you know full voice for that too which left me a little hoarse starting yesterday, and I realized I'm a little hoarse today. So bear with me in my hoarseness, but I hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you guys got a chance to watch the versus battle, and if you didn't, sugar, we're going to talk about it today. But nonetheless, let's talk about our first topic for today. Baby, I knew it was a matter of time before these people started making these COVID vaccine cards into a side hustle. Ciao. Old Corner Saloon Bar owner Todd Anderson was arrested in Acapo for selling fake, fraudulent COVID vaccination cards for $20. Now, first off, now I'm all here for a side hustle, but $20 is actually a lot more affordable than I expected. Don't they charge more for fake driver's license? And he over here peddling these COVID vaccination cards for $20? Todd, I'm sure you could get a little bit more money, honey. But baby, he got caught. So apparently, a few undercover agents bought eight of these phony vaccination cards from him in the month of April. And so they went and arrested him and shut down camp. Now, I don't know if y'all know, so don't get no ideas. Making these fake vaccination cards are purely and highly illegal, especially since there's a government seal on the cards now. They made the selling of fake cards and the buying of fake cards, aham, uh -huh, beauty besties, illegal because of the government seal on it. So don't get caught up in here, sugar, in these streets, getting arrested for trying to buy a phony vaccination card, nor selling them either. I'm just looking out for y'all. Now, you know, Ever since Bill and Melinda Gates announced that they was getting divorced, honey, I said we were going to follow this like the yellow brick road. So apparently, word on the street is Melinda started talking to a divorce attorney back in 2019. Uh-huh. And you know what I'm thinking? Because y'all know I put stories together in my head and it makes sense. I'm going to let y'all in on a little piece of my head right now. Sounds like Melinda started doing the framework for this divorce from Bill back in 2019 and then in 2020, honey, the panini hit and she was stuck indoors with him and she couldn't make a move. And I think a lot of it had to do with not only the, um, the pandemic, but also that their youngest daughter is just now 18. And let's keep it real. For those parents out there that have stuck around in marriages because of the sake of the kids, I can't see that this wouldn't be a real thing for them either. Because at the end of the day, whether they're wealthy or not, they're still parents. And I'm sure that also played a huge factor in Melinda and Bill staying together with their youngest daughter being so young at the time. Now, here's why I think Melinda went to the uh, attorney, and this is what the word on the street is, too. Y'all know that whole Jeffrey Epstein and Scandalo? Uh -huh. Well, apparently, Melinda started getting concerned because when Jeff Epstein, you know, got caught, got arrested, all on types of ch um, pornography, ch ch sex trafficking, all the, the salaciousness of it all, well, obviously, rumors started swirling around Bill and his affiliation with Jeff Epstein, and Melinda was not having it. So apparently, Jeff Epstein and Bill Gates' friendship goes back into, like, 2011, 2013, and Melinda was not a fan of Jeff Epstein. And apparently, Melinda told Bill that I don't like him, and you need to distance yourself. We need to distance ourselves from him um, and X, Y, and Z, giving him all types of, you know, marriage advice from the wife like i don't like him you need to lay low and we don't need to be all up in the streets with him well y'all know bill was known to have traveled allegedly um to down to palm beach here in florida with jeff epstein along with some of bill's associates from the bill and melinda foundation 
Mm-hmm. Traveling with Jeff Epstein. Mm-hmm. So anyways, so apparently Melinda did not like that. She warned Bill and she started going to a divorce, divorce attorney in 2019. Now, here's what I can respect that was happening in the, their marriage, right? As they're beginning this divorce process, they have a separation contract in place, which clearly lays out how they plan on dividing up their assets. And that if they don't divide up their assets as laid out in this contract, then they can sue each other for breach of contract. Now, that is some real grown people way of splitting up and dividing up the assets. Nicole Young, <clears throat> Dr. Dre's wife, you might want to take nope, sugar. But it sounds to me, Melinda was over here stacking her coins and planning her great escape once she found a way out, and I guess on the other side of this whole pandemic. So we're going to continue to watch this because y'all know this thing is juicy. And I, it, I would be interested to know. So y'all know Bill had his covenant with his ex-girlfriend. I still want to know what Melinda got going on over here, along with these extra bags she probably stacked while she was talking to her divorce lawyer back in 2019. Because you don't make no big power moves like this without really planning it and thinking it through. I ain't dumb, but I did take a lesson from the, the book of Melinda Gates. Moving on, did you guys watch the Escape and SWV battle? Honey, these icons came to play. Now, I got a few things that we want to talk about it. First off, Escape didn't come to play with the girls. They came out in their finest bedazzled stretch pieces. Every time Candy walked in her heels, I held my breath. Baby, that stiletto was real stiletto-y. And you know Candy's a Georgia peach, honey. She nice and thickums, child. I don't know what was going on with Tiny Leprechaun Harris' outfit. I liked it from the top up, but the bottom down just wore me out. And let me put it into perspective for you all. Y'all know, like, a faja, you know, and faja is the Spanish word for, like, you know, a waist cincher and all, of course, and, like, the spanks that keep everything else in together. The bottom half was, like, this... This romper type of short set on Tiny. Y'all know she got some work done. So it made her butt look weird. It looked like it was cutting off the circulation right at the, the top of her thigh. Uh, very much like post-op surgery type of thing. It just was awkward wearing and it was awkward looking on her. But again, like the top up was cute. Now, I'm going to talk about hair and makeup in a minute. Tasha looks so cute to me. Y'all know she lost all that weight, child. She's now vegan. Tasha looked cute. She, you know, she's, it was nice and snatched into her outfit. And T Tamika, it was, it was all black. I mean, I guess the jazz and the pajazz of it all was, you know, in the legs with the little fur shingle things that she had on with her bell bottoms. And I will also say that going back to Candy, Candy gave me very much a snatched waist, honey. And I was here for it. Now, let's just jump on over to SWV real quick. Coco came out in her high stiletto heels, her little bootlins. They almost looked too high for her. Maybe that's the reason why she didn't want to stand up for the first half of the versus battle, child. Taj, I've always loved Taj. And let me tell you something. I forgot how beautiful Taj is. Actually, I didn't forget. Taj has always been gorgeous. Taj came up with these little short shorts and these little combat boots. Gave me very much sister homegirl. I'm going to go have brunch with my girls in D.C. in the district. And then we go into a day party. Her outfit was very day party realness. And I don't know if it will be necessarily a versus realness. But she still looked cute. And Lily. Yeah, it's Lily. Like, Lily's outfit didn't scream anything to me. I'm just glad Lily showed up, child. But let's talk hair and makeup. Because you know I was all up in it for hair and makeup. Starting first with Candy. I love Candy and a good matte red lip. And you know, Candy loves a good matte red lip, child. And I also like her little hairstyle was braided, a little souped around, came through, made Candy look very young and fresh. Um, and you know, at this point, I think my issue with Tiny is the work Tiny has had done. You could slap all the makeup on Tiny and it's just going to look weird to me. Between her lips and everything else that she's probably had cinched, plucked, tucked, snipped, pinched, everything. It just does not sit well. But I will say her Snuffleupagus lash was real cute. Now let's talk Tasha. Mama was a bronze golden goddess. Her makeup, that beautiful fuchsia red was well blended. Her lip color, just nice and juicy. She, Tasha really was a standout for me. Now, Tamika, on the other hand, Tamika's makeup and hair felt a little bit like an oil and water mix. They don't mix, right? So I had issues, and I think it might have been a combination of like 
the lighting and the foundation match for Tamika. Something was going off and weird because Tamika at times looked green. I don't know who did her eyeshadow, but it looked like she may have done it herself because there was no blending. It was red glitter and black. Those are two colors, red and black. No blending, nothing. Just sitting right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, like they were on public transportation. Now, in that ponytail, it was cute, very much, you know, from the beauty supply store, shake it out and attach it. I, her styling just felt very much um, a little C minus compared to the other girls. Um, but I digress. Now, here's my issue. And here's my disclaimer first. We know that SWV and Escape are icons, honey. Iconic because they gave us great girl group music. And there's something to be said about even like Escape, both of those groups to have those deeper melanated women outside of Tiny during that era. It was all about the vocals, not necessarily about the, the quote unquote beauty standards of like today's music, right? So these girls have earned their title in their seat on their versus stage. Now, just because they've earned it does not necessarily mean it gives them permission to come with an attitude. Now, I will say this. They ain't making no summer bops anymore, so you got to be able to take your flowers and be gracious. And there was two people that sat on that stage that I had issues with. And we're going to start first with Coco. First of all, oh, I forgot to talk about Coco and SWV with their hair and makeup. So, Lily, meh. Uh, Taj hair was straight. Taj makeup is actually really, really nice and natural. And I, it really complimented her. And Coco, beautiful. I love those golden braids on her, but they were one too heavy. And she kept playing in them. And did y'all catch? She even hit Taj in the face. And Taj was like, if you hit me one more time with your braids. Like Coco looks so disengaged, which takes me back to my issue with Coco and her attitude. For that first half, Coco looked disengaged. When Escape was singing, Coco was playing in her hair. Coco just was out of it. And my thing is Coco, and on top of that, I felt like Taj and Lily had to sing in the first half the most in order to get Coco to do her job. Like, sis, you're here for a reason. Do your job. Stand up and sing. You, We came to hear you guys sing. So I will, in all fairness, though, Coco did, uh, you know, do an Instagram post yesterday saying that she witnessed a woman being shot and dying and bleeding out in front of her hotel room. Then, obviously, the commotion of the versus battle, having to get to the to the auditorium and to the set. She had an anxiety attack, so she was really working through a lot of things, especially the first half of the versus battle. I get it. I can't imagine seeing anybody get shot and dying right before I have to go and perform. But my question is... When did they have y'all housed at in Atlanta? Now, I know Atlanta, it, it sounds like Atlanta is the ghetto these days. Because if you are staying at a pretty decent hotel and you see somebody being shot, that is the ghetto to me. Girl, were y'all staying in the trap? Like, I need to know. Like, that's a lot. So I can understand her being thrown off her game. Now, what I don't understand is Tani sitting up on there acting like she didn't want to be there. Girl, are you mad that you having to leave your alleged sex dungeon and come and do some work and actually sing? Tani was another one that didn't want to stand. That To me, her feet hurt in those, those shoes that she was wearing. But Tani didn't want to stand. She wanted to sit on the stairs like she was still in her 90s girl group moment. Like, girl, stand up and sing. She sat on that couch texting somebody. Who knows who she was texting? But for me, unless it's one of your children's or your house is on fire, girl, you're paid to be here too along with the other three. Get off your phone. And Tamika had to tell her, get off your phone. Then she had a, an attitude with the DJ. What was happening? Did y'all catch? She literally rolled her eyes at the DJ shortly after the, um, she came out and sat down on that couch. So Tiny was another one that had an attitude. And I will say... To, I, I, and I, I appreciate this about Tiny. As much as she speaks lazy because she got that Georgia drawl, baby, when she opens her mouth, Tiny sings boots down. And you know she sings boots down because they cut her part out on Do You Want To? And that whoever that audience was was not about to have it in Atlanta. They said, run it back. Meanwhile, Taj was like, okay, next song. Mm -mm. Spinderella was like, I can't do nothing. Run it back. And they ran it back. Tiny sang Boots Down, Escape sang. Tonight? Oh, baby. Let me tell you something. Tonight and Do You Want To in high school was the jam. And going back to SWV, they, 
After they came back for the second half, that's when they clocked in. They changed shoes. They've been on their Nike Air Force One Jordans. They had their SWV sweatshirt on. And Coco finally opened up her mouth to sing. And when she sang Rain, and no, no, actually, let me take that back. When she got up and took those shoes off, she knew she knew what she needed to do. She took them shoes off to sing that remake of Patti LaBelle, If You Ask Me To. Baby, my lord. When I tell you, if you ask me to, have me down on my knees at that versus party, because she showed up. And so with all that being said, I needed to figure out, I know Coco's excuse. Tiny, what was your excuse for your attitude, sugar? Because it was trash. And when I say trash, trash. And then when she wasn't with, with, working with an attitude, she was so caught up in the moment, she forgot one of her parts. Like, just, it was all, it was just lazy to me, Tiny. And I just, I, I expected more. And I get it. Like, there's a lot going on with her and T.I. right now, tip. But baby, you, you got paid to do a job. Show up. Sing the fan Dorito favorite. Slap on some Urban Decay. And, eat, and drink your Ciroc and give us the show. Now, who do y'all think got next? Because I would like to see Tony Braxton get next. And there's something floating around online that they started, like the set list between Tony Braxton and Mary J. Blige. And I'm here for it. Now, I don't know if I want to hear Mary scream for two hours or Tony sing to us in a whisper underneath the bed. But I am here for these legendary women to get their flowers as well. Because they both got breakup depressing songs and they got some bangers too. So y'all let me know. Did, one, did you like the versus battle with SWV and Escape? Did it give everything you need? And two, what are your thoughts on Tony Braxton and Mary J. Blige? And on that note, I got to go. Guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like and leave me a comment. Most importantly, check the notifications and make sure they're turned on. Who loves you? <laughs> I do. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye.